All right. Welcome back, everybody. After a great long morning, I guess. Now we're clearly into the afternoon. Had a good day. Made it to the afternoon. Absolutely. Yeah. Through the week to the afternoon. Not too many hiccups along the way. We got a lot of people joining us for a synthesis, which is great. We're going to try to get everybody in here before we start closing. Thanks, Kristen. We're happy you loved every session. Uh, Nancy, glad you enjoyed it as well. Teresa had a fun morning. Excellent. Oh, I love seeing all these things come through the chat. Thank you. Uh, let us know too, if there was something that was particularly inspiring to you. We're gonna be sending out a survey this afternoon. Uh, while it's still fresh, we would encourage you to complete the survey. It really helps us understand how your experience was with this conference, having never hosted a virtual conference before. Uh, we do want to hear that feedback from you. We also want to think about what this conference might look like next year, next February, where hopefully we can bring everybody back together. Oh, but yeah, we also, we be back. yeah, we also recognize that the virtual format may be more beneficial for some people. So just want to have a good way to proceed into the future. Some people say keep to do it the virtual. balance, huh? We'll yeah. balance it out. Some people love virtual. Look at that. Keep your pajamas on, huh? <laughs> Somebody said this was the most exciting Saturday they've, they've had since the pandemic. Oh so. my gosh, that's great. It's been exciting for both of us. We, we trust you live a very exciting life as well. So this just kind of took it over the top. That's right. right. Okay. <laughs> Saves on travel time. Yeah. All you guys, thank you for this feedback. It's really super helpful. And that's what we're hoping to get out of the synthesis here. Um, so get everybody in. We've got a few more people still straggling in. We'll give it another minute or two before we get started. Yeah, this is great. Having a heavy teaching schedule helped make it possible. So this is great. Great feedback from everybody. Glad some of you were stretching yourselves and attending things that you normally might not attend. Oh, Liz misses running up and down the stairs here at the museum. <laughs> <laughs> so does my waistline, Liz. Yeah, we miss the hands-on component for sure. That is something that is a real highlight to the conference. So we definitely miss that in-person hands-on. Yeah, and Carly's mentioning a hybrid and, and I think most likely we'll end up in a hybrid. So uh, that's, that's gonna be the new, the word of 2021 hybrid. Yeah, I think yeah. that's gonna be the word. Yeah, Holly, it was saying she misses uh, connecting with her peers. Um, and I think that's a big part of what we always like to have happen at our educator evenings and at the conference is the connections that happen between all of you. Uh, we learn a lot from our experiences with you and we definitely wanna be connected with you. Heather, great feedback. She can apply everything she learned, which is wonderful to hear. Excellent. Okay, well, I think we're going to go ahead and pull up our PowerPoint, Christian, if you don't mind. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and mute also, Craig, you'll have to unmute man. yourself here. Why don't you wear your LVPA sweatshirt? Perfect. Excellent. Just a reminder to keep muted, and um, there may be opportunity for everybody to talk, but we just want to keep muted for this opening remarks and just thank you all for joining us um, over the last, I guess it's been four days now. Yes. Um, we started, yeah, it's been great, Craig. Uh, we started the conference with an introduction to design thinking. Um, and over the course of the past several days, we've introduced you to artists, to designers, to educators who all utilize this process as they work across the disciplines. We hope that you've gotten inspiration that you can take back to your classroom, that you have been introduced to new artists and new designers and new ways about thinking about your disciplines. And we wanted to start by closing today's session and just kind of with a basic synthesis and Craig has developed a poll. He's going to drop the link into the chat here and Craig, do you want to share how we're going to move through that? Yeah. So hopefully you're at a, a place where you can access this. This is a word cloud we're going to be creating. So if you can go to that link that I just shared um, on our Slido and um, you can enter one word, you can enter multiple words on different lines and we're going to hopefully create this uh, group word cloud uh, kind of your takeaway reflection word after attending this conference. It's our art piece. Here we go. I Very see cool. seven of you joined. I'm going to continue to put it in the chat so you don't have to keep on scrolling up. 
Yeah, so link to that uh, Slido through the chat. And we just want to have those one word reflections from everybody. Yeah, if there's a couple words that you come up with is great. One word, just keep three. it going. And Terry, I see you dropped it into the chat. We're wanting everybody to drop it into Slido. So we're just gonna keep dropping that link right here into the, into the chat. Yeah, if you can go to the Slido, that'd be great. Follow the, the chat link and then type it in there. We have 103 words already coming in. So keep them coming. It's looking good. We're going to stop in just another 30 seconds. So you have a chance to get in there. Still get your word or words in. We have 160 of you participating now, which is great. Keep it coming. Keeps you on your toes, right? And I'm trying to capture some that I see in the chat here to add them to. Oh, nice. Look at you. Multitasking, my friend. Hi, and I have a lot of computer screens up here. <laughs> it helps, <laughs> three, doesn't it? Three monitors. It certainly helps get me move me along. All right. I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna close this, and we're gonna share it and kind of see what what bubbles up. Oh, they're still coming in. I don't want to close it quite yet. My goodness. You guys are great. All right. Ready. ID8, Dina, that's great reflection. Was surprised by her own reaction just to seeing the word ID8. All right, and I'm going to share my screen real quick so we can see what bubbled up. So it looks like a big word that we all have is inspiring, inspired, enlightening, creativity. Uh, there's uh, some empathize and empathy and engaging and inspirational connection, curiosity, innovative, awe-inspiring, rejuvenated, eye-opening, new ideas, motivational. We really thank you all so much for participating. This is going to be a beautiful reflection piece for us as we uh, take this to our sponsors and to all of our presenters today. So thank you for this lovely uh, art piece now that we have. Yeah, we've been having a lot of inquiries from our presenters who are looking for feedback. They have enjoyed interacting with all of you and being presenters at the conference. Um, if you have any reflections or comments on some of the sessions that you participated in, please feel free to respond to us. You can email us, you can drop it into the chat here, um, and we will share that information with our presenters afterwards. Um, Christian, if you don't mind pulling back our pulling back up the PowerPoint, we're going to just take a walk through the past several days. Um, and just, you know, we started with Dr. Dana Henriksen and Dr. Punya Mishra from ASU uh, as they introduced us to the concepts of design thinking. And if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, reminding us that every aspect of education is designed. So this is kind of that five-step process of the design thinking process, which is empathize. So kind of building an understanding of who you are working with and what problems you're trying to solve, understanding the nuances of individuals and kind of taking a, a human-centric approach to that, um, defining what our problems are or what we're trying to solve and ideation. And I think that's uh, one of my favorite parts of this process and where our artists come into is this ideation and trying to figure out how you translate information and make it accessible. So that's part of that prototyping and testing process. I hope that all of you will take some of the tools today and be able to apply those to your um, apply those in your classroom. And uh, we will have those tools available. So after the conference, I just wanna remind everybody that you can go back to the conference schedule and click on all of the sessions, not just the ones that you attended. So you've been accessing the portal through my sessions. If you want to go back, you'll go to schedule and there is where you'll find all the sessions. The recordings are being posted as we're able to um, over the next several days. And we're also adding some of the extension pieces. So special links, um, classroom tools that you can use. We're going to drop all of those in. If you missed a session, you can go back and rewatch it. If there was one that you really wanted to attend, but you decided to go to two others, you can go back and see those. Um, and then Christian, if we can move to the next slide, please. 
On Friday night, we had a wonderful presentation with Paul D. Miller, AKA DJ Spooky. Um, he taught us how to riff and remix, remix and mash up history and think about the future. Um, I thought that was a really fun night and I appreciate everybody who joined us on Friday. And then earlier this morning, Christian, if we can move to the next, we had a really wonderful presentation and I think was one of the most uh, inspiring presentations of the event, thinking of people who have probably the coolest jobs in the world, uh, working in as visual strategists for JPL um, and helping, you know, their work involves thinking about the future and applying design concepts uh, as they make the inaccessible accessible working with scientists and engineers at NASA. And we can go to the next one there. Great. So we had some incredible uh, workshops uh, throughout the morning and um, some amazing keynote speaker presenters. And I just wanted to call attention to, because um, we couldn't all be at, at all of them, right? So we wanna make sure that we pay attention to them and, and call them out. So this particular um, picture here is from the Art of Science workshop with uh, Dr. Tiffany Pereira from DRI. And she uh, talk about, talked about how utilizing a fossil that was from the Natural History Museum or the Nevada's History Museum um, that she was able to create a, a painting depicting the actual time when that fossil was found. And so she talked about the art of science and how the two uh, connect. And, and uh, she, taught, she went through the whole story of how she really went back and forth with the scientists and the artists and, and how they came upon uh, this particular picture. Those of you who were in her workshop, I see you're, you're already tweeting that it was really um, valuable and that you got a lot about a uh, lot out of it. And, uh, looking for the turtles. Uh, the turtles actually are right on the far right side, near, close to the bottom. So if you, um, there's a bunch of turtles in there for sure. I remember she told me the whole turtle story as well. So thank you, Dr. Pereira. She's a DRI scientist and we just love having her on our faculty and uh, appreciate the work she does. We also had, um, let's go to that next slide because I wanna call attention to my friends, uh, John Royce and Ellie Madeline who um, they're Foley artists, um, but they're much more than that uh, because they're, they're amazing human beings as well. Uh, John, um, he didn't brag enough, but I wanted to brag for him because he was a Foley artist for one of my favorite movies, Star Wars, as well as all of the other uh, pop culture movies like Back to the Future and E.T. and, and Tinkerbell and so many uh, sounds that we know and just hear in our heads were created by John. Uh, and Ellie is also uh, an amazing uh, Foley artist who uh, deals with uh, stage Foley. And they talked about the art of science and uh, or the art of, of sound and how they recreate these sound effects uh, for the movies and, and, for, and for the theater. And I, I see a lot of people um, uh, in the chat who were saying how they're gonna bring the Foley into their practice. Maybe when doing some literature reading um, to have the, the, uh, your students bring in Foley sound and, and do some, some cool things. So we're glad that this workshop was really inspiring for you. And I'm so thankful to, to my friend John for, uh, and, and Ellie for being here. Um, and uh, we brought uh, you a NASA educator, Susan Kohler. And Susan's workshop um, was really relevant because again, uh, talking about the rover that's landing in 12 days um, on Mars, uh, Susan walked us through the process of how to create simple machines through a shoebox rover and the design process that went into uh, creating this rover and, and redoing it. She talked a lot about having the students um, actually having to, to do it and then redo it again, uh, which is again part of, um, part of what we've been talking about in the design thinking process. So uh, we really appreciate our friend from NASA um, for being here to present that workshop. Claire, you're muted, my friend. There we go, I'm back here now. Excellent. Uh, we were really pleased to have our partners from the Discovery Children's Museum in Las Vegas and the Discovery here in Reno present the workshop bringing literacy to life through design thinking. They were practicing applying the design thinking process through the lens of storytelling to help uh, consider how literacy cultivates creative problem solving in the classroom environment. Uh, the intent was to awaken the designer and thinker through the imaginative process of storytelling. And next slide. 
And we were really pleased to have poet, Clark County Poet Laureate Vogue Robinson presented by the Smith Center for Performing Arts, who did an experiential workshop designed to use the power of both the written and spoken word and uh, apply it to the classroom community. Next one there. And finally, we had Cal Spelichich, our Bay Area artist, talking about uh, lasers and lights and how you could use simple methods to think through big ideas and just what basic tools might be used to help you in the classroom think through some of those big concepts. And our next slide there. Um, we wanted to have a final reflection poll. Um, we have some questions posed here, but Craig is actually going to pose a question in our poll and, and solicit some responses. And Christian, if you don't mind, we'll go back one slide. That way we're not over thinking or actually you can stop screen sharing for right now. Yeah, because I, I just launched the poll again. Um, we actually have a different poll. I have a, a prompt and the question that we're asking you now to reflect on is what's one nugget that you'll take away from this conference and put into practice with your students? I'm sure there's more than one nugget that you all have, but uh, if you could just share one nugget, that'd be really amazing. So please go to that uh, Slido app and uh, the link is there a couple times. Let's leave about two minutes here for that reflection to happen. Yeah, but you participating in this, uh, it's going to allow us to capture all the, all this data and share it again with our presenters, and uh, and it's going to be really helpful for us to show how this is going to be put into practice because that's really what it's all about, right? We're here to to inspire you, and then it's up to you then to put it into practice. Sarah, I see your your question. If you don't mind, just emailing me. I can, I can try to help look at the back end there. Let's see, Elizabeth is asking, let's, um, we'll get to the chat after this and make sure that we're get, capturing everybody's questions too. Yeah, yeah, you can put your question, keep on putting questions in the chat if there's something you want us to address. Um, but we really appreciate this, the nuggets. Look at all these nuggets we're getting, Claire. Great. Oh, let me drop in. I'm going to, oh, can you, can you see, I'm going to, I'm going to share it because sure. you could see it as it's coming in. It's pretty exciting. We have so many. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just great. Oh, thank you guys. This is great. Really helpful for us. We're really glad that this that this uh, this stuff is useful. You know, um, it's always a challenge doing things virtually. You do it every day. We don't, and we trust that uh, we're giving you things that you can use. And so we're really thankful um, that you're sharing this information with us and how you're going to put it into practice. So I think um, you can continue to, uh, to keep on typing in there, but we can yeah. move on um, back to our normally scheduled program here. Oh, good. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful responses in the chat there. Um, and then Craig, if you'll just stop sharing. Yeah, um, absolutely. Christian, we'll have you pull back up that screen here. And here we go. Great. So we are also posing a larger set of questions and we want you to take these questions and use them for reflection after the conference today. So what value, skills, mindsets, habits could be gained by using design thinking to develop and refine STEAM instruction and curricula? What could be gained by students approaching their learning this way? Uh, you're welcome to respond in the chat. You can also drop reflections into that Slido. Um, but more importantly, we just want you to think of these questions and consider them as you leave today. 
Um, what is your vision for a powerful STEAM learning experience? I think that oftentimes we're looking for other people to deliver to us a model that we're supposed to follow. We hope that we gave you points of inspiration, um, but what we really are hoping is that you will de define your own personal vision for what a powerful STEAM learning experience can be. Um, and I'm reminded, and we'll check this out in the next slide, I'm reminded that Punya said to us on Monday um, that every aspect of education is made up. So this is your opportunity to make up what this looks like in your classroom. And then how do you implement this into your classroom? So yep, and there's that quote by Punya. So every aspect of education is made up. So how do you apply this to your classroom? What are you going to make up uh, based on your experiences today? Um, how are you going to take these sessions that you attended and apply them to your classroom. Um, hopefully it will inspire some of the work that you do. That's our, our big goal, I think, for Craig and I. Um, and if we can move on, I think that's our last slide here, Craig. Yeah, because, uh, well, before, I mean, before we say goodbye, we have a lot of thank yous to all. Oh, yes. So, so yeah. I want to make sure that I, uh, I start doing that. Um, but maybe you want to jump in on this slide and then I'll do uh, some of, well, I mean, I, I can do this, right? Because you've thanked yeah. the sponsors enough. I get to thank them too. Uh, so we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, of course, Tesla is our lead sponsor uh, for the uh, museum and DRI STEAM education programs and uh, the Nevada Gold Mines as well. Definitely to thank them and our supporters, Nevada Department of Ed, the uh, OSET Office, uh, Nevada STEM Advisory Council and Nevada STEAM Subcommittee, uh, all working uh, throughout the state to bring you these type of programs and our amazing collaborators uh, who work with us, our Discovery Children's Museum in Las Vegas, the Terry Lee Wells Discovery Museum up there in Reno, NASA, of course, we thank them, and Nevada State Museum, and the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. I have to throw in um, a huge thank you to my friends at the Nevada Museum of Art. Um, having you, Claire, as a thought partner, as a partner along this journey has just truly been uh, amazing, a breath of fresh air, and I love every moment I spent working with you these past eight months on this uh, uh, this tremendous conference. So thank you, and um, we also have to thank uh, the amazing staff at uh, the Nevada Museum of Art and at DRI. So I want to call them out, the ones who've also put in so much time behind the scenes that you don't get to see, but uh, trust me, this wouldn't have gone on without them. So we thank Jackie Dawson, Christian Davies, Caleb Temple, and uh, Chelsea Ontiveros. Um, Chelsea, I mentioned because she's going to be giving you all those certificates that you're going to be getting very soon. So her work is still to come. <laughs> um, uh, we also need to thank all of our workshop techs and hosts. Um, it took an army to make this into a virtual uh, job here. And uh, we really appreciate every single one of you uh, out there who have uh, given your time to make this uh, conference the success it has been. Uh, as, um, as my friend mentioned, we have access to all the materials. So you can visit all of the sessions uh, on nvsteam.org. So make sure to visit those and you can download any of those PowerPoints and presentations. Uh, and revisit those sessions that you missed. I know a big question we've been getting is PD certificates that you'll be issued. So a reminder, these certificates are um, from the Nevada State, uh, Nevada Department of Education. Um, so they're good towards your license renewal and um, you'll be getting those via email probably in about four weeks. Um, and they'll be uh, listed the amount of hours that you attended. We'll call all that uh, data from uh, the attendance list that's pulled from our Zoom uh, meetings. Uh, so don't stress if you don't see the PED certificates right away. It's going to take us some time to get through all that data and get them to you. Um, speaking of data, we are also hoping, uh, look, uh, asking you to look forward to our evaluation, uh, which is going to be sent to you all at two o'clock today, an official evaluation that we use to uh, continue to elevate our um, our conferences and we really appreciate all your valuable feedback as it's brought us to new heights. Um, Claire reminds me that there's also a gift that you'll be getting in the mail. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's going to take a couple weeks to get out, but uh, look forward to something in your mailbox uh, very yeah. soon. 
So we have a few things that we'll be sending out to you. Some of these are going to be available as PDFs. Um, they'll be downloadable uh, attached to the sessions, but we're going to be sending everybody a set of the visions of the future posters. Um, they'll be smaller, probably at eight by 10 or so, but we'll send you a set of those really cool posters, um, a design thinking poster that you can pin up in your classroom, uh, and one of the origami robots uh, that Elizabeth shared with us today. So that'll be a fun little packet that you'll get in the coming weeks, um, just kind of looking through the chat, making sure that we are addressing everybody's questions. Again, all of the recordings will be available at nvsteam.org. Uh, those will be available as soon as we are ready to put them up. We are giving ourselves two weeks to complete that, but it's been going pretty quick. We actually expect to have the keynotes up there in the next couple of days. Um, I believe DJ Spookies is already up and our Wednesday opening is already up. So we're moving pretty quickly. Um, we're at continuing to add resources. And once everything is completely loaded to the website, we will send you an email so that you can go back. Um, where again, you can check anytime you go to nvsteam.org, go to the schedule. So not my sessions, you're going to go to the schedule and then click on more info for any particular session that you're hoping to get more information from. You can email Craig and I at any time. We are more than happy to answer questions, uh, hopefully solve problems. Maybe there are no problems. Problems, um, but our, I, our, we're welcome to any kind of inquiry that you have. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Craig. You've been an awesome collaborator and creative partner, um, and it's been wonderful working with you so intimately over the past several months um, since August. And Jackie, Christian, uh, our incredible team at DRI and at the Nevada Museum of Art, Megan, Tony, Christina, um, just a wonderful group of people supporting today. Nikki, Nisha, I mean, I could go on and on. There's a lot of people behind the scenes here today. And we just want to uh, dangle a carrot because next year in February, we're coming back and hopefully we'll be back in person. So look forward to, uh, look, uh, to getting an invitation to next year's conference. We want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your amazing schedule and for all the work that you're doing to keep our young people moving forward and in the right direction and keeping them inspired. Uh, yeah. Thank you all. Thank this you. So I think that's the conclusion of the session. We'll stay on the line here uh, just for a little bit, um, probably another three or four minutes. We can ask individual questions. We'll kind of pay attention to the chat and see if there's anything that we might have missed here. Um, really appreciate all the reflections that are coming through in the chat. And we'll have that nice summary from Slido where Craig captured some of your feedback. Um, again, those surveys are really important to helping support the conference as we move forward and helping us design conferences that are um, that present you with information that you can apply to the classroom. We wanna make sure that we're giving you the best experience possible and that we are meeting your needs. Uh, so we wanna hear from you. So thank you all for being here. You can definitely uh, hang out with us and feel free to unmute if you'd like and say hello. Um, this is now the end of the official session. Have a great weekend. Stay well. Thank you. Stay safe. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. <laughs> yeah. Thank Most you. Most of our teachers are getting vaccinated. It's great. Stay healthy, everybody. Claire, can you tell us again where we would find the recorded videos once they're available? Yep, so it's nvsteam.org, which is the conference portal that you've all been using. And you have been accessing your, your sessions through my sessions. Rather than going there, you're going to go to schedule. So the schedule will show you the complete lineup of all the sessions that we offer. You'll click on more info. And when you click there, go to the bottom of the page, past the bios and you'll, we'll start to populate the, um, the sessions. Let me pull up one and see if I might be able to share that with you here. Let me see if I can share That'd that. Be cool. Yeah, actually I can. So, okay. So here we have um, nvsteam.org and I have clicked on schedule and workshops. So for example, we had our opening keynote creating STEAM by design beyond STEM and arts integration. I'm going over here and clicking on more info. I am going to go down and scroll past the description to view session. Amazing. And this, you'll need to log in. Once you log in, it will take you to that. And Perfect. I think we're going to lift that login um, after the conference. So probably next Monday, we're going to see it or Tuesday, I meet with the company. We'll see if we can lift the login requirement there. Um, but you, you would log in and be able to access it there. And I can't go back here. 
Um, Perfect. Our question came in if uh, teachers or educators who attended this weekend um, want to share this with teachers who weren't able to attend. Um, if we're not able to lift that login registration, can people still register to then be able to access then knowing they won't get continuing education credits, but just to be able to share and maybe have a teacher happy hour and make a Mars shoebox rover? Uh -huh. <laughs> that is a great, um, that's a great question. So I think what I will do is open up the registration. We did have the registration closed this morning, um, but I can extend the registration until we are able to lift the, um, the restriction. To, to look that one. Capture, capture as many people as attend. So that's kind of why we have you register so we can make sure we can report to um, our funders and sponsors who's been here. Yes. And I'm just going to open that one more time here. I closed it a little early. So again, back here on the nvsteam.org website, schedule and workshops um, for that keynote, clicking on more info, scrolling down. So I, you would go to view session to see the recording, um, but we also have the related documents. So their PowerPoint is here. It's posted. Um, we have the useful links. So those are the pages for Dana Henriksen and Punya Mishra. We have that educator membership request form. And then this is the Stanford Design Thinking bootleg that was referenced. So if you were to click on that, it would take you to this link. Um, we have a PDF that we'll be adding. So a lot of the presenters have been sending me their materials post presentation. So we will be adding that. Um, adding those resources over the next couple of days. And as I mentioned, we will also send an email when everything has been uploaded. So when all the recordings are complete, we'll send you an email so you can come back. Um, and just to confirm, I will open up registration so people can continue to registration until we lift the login requirement. Um, membership, let me see. Uh, the membership link is, Christian just dropped that into the page. I'll do, that is where you may apply for a free membership to the Nevada Museum of Art. Um, those memberships are restricted to Nevada K-12 educators. So you do need to be a current active teacher. Um, so you will need to have a email address that is a, a school district or private schools can apply to, um, to apply for that membership. It's free. If you would like to add your family to that membership, it's $20 additional. Nice. And uh, it's good for Southern Nevada teachers as well. It is. If they ever travel up to Reno. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw a question come through about our educator evening programs, and those happen on the first Wednesday of the month. Anybody is welcome to attend those. They're currently happening virtually, and we will continue to offer those um, virtually and then likely in a hybrid uh, format when we're able to do that in the future. Um, again, first Wednesday of the month, everybody who's attended the conference will be added to that email list. So you will get updates on our regular professional development sessions. Those do qualify for professional development um, and we run them every month except January and July. We will summarize your attendance um, in January and then again in July. So that's when we issue the certificates, which is a culmination of all the hours that you've attended. Yeah. The conference opened on our typical educator evening, um, but the hours for the whole conference will be put together. Um, so this will not be a part of your educator evening hours. Right. It'll so, be a conference hour. Totally separate, yeah. And DRI also has a professional development that we offer throughout the year. And we'll add you to our newsletter so you can make sure that you get uh, advance notice about uh, any of the offerings that DRI is um, creating for you. Yeah, uh, let's see, Nevada Museum of Art is open. We are open today and tomorrow until four o'clock. And the exhibit closes tomorrow, correct? So if you wanna go, tomorrow. go today or tomorrow. Yes, so we belong here. The exhibit that we walked through last night uh, does close tomorrow as does the world stage, which is just a beautiful exhibition. Um, I saw somebody ask about support staff. So Angela, just email us or put a note in your application and then we'll check it. Um, so that would be like uh, intervention staff, um, some after school teachers sometimes. So we kind of look at those on a case by case and we'll give you your feedback there. So if they have an EDU, pretty much an EDU email address, they can probably get. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, just email us if you have an exception and, and we'll take a look at it. 
And let's see, Brian is asking about how to get the certificate for credit. So everybody, we have tracked your attendance throughout the whole conference. The conference hosting platform will tell us the total number of sessions that you attended and for how long. So when you checked in, when you checked out. Um, so if you came in really late or really early or, uh, or left really early, then you're, we will know. We will know. <laughs> Um, so we have kind of the back end data to support that. And then we will add up the total amount of time that you participated. So some people only attended our keynotes, so they may get three or four hours of um, continuing education credit. Other people attended the full session, so they might get five or six hours. And to clarify which organization hosts the educator evenings on Wednesdays, that's the Nevada Museum of Art. So uh, first Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m. Um, and we will be adding you to our e-blast. Jackie Dawson helps administrate that program for us. And I can drop her email in the chat here. Yeah. And Jackie has been behind the scenes managing the craziness of the weight rooms and just keeping us all on track here. For sure. We're glad to be able to provide this uh, free professional workshop, free PD for you. It's so important. We value you. Great, Brandy. Thanks for your feedback. We yeah, we are definitely happy to be able to pro provide this for free. Uh, Lori, which information were you asking about that includes costs? I'm I'm unclear. You can unmute and ask. Just the uh, educators' evenings at the um, museum. What was is there the a cost? Is there a cost no. to it? No, There's no cost. For no, they're offered free. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Lila is asking if you can add a family later if you already have a membership. Yes, so you can contact our membership office. Um, Ella can help you with that. And I don't know if maybe Christian, could you look up Ella's email address and drop it in there? Let me see if I can grab it too. Oh, Jackie I think just got I can a get shout it. out. Woo -woo. I got it here. And Ella has been on a lot of the sessions today. So here's membership questions. Yeah, Heather, you can unmute. It's, anybody can unmute at this point. You don't have to keep on typing. It's totally fine. Hey, mine's kind of... Um... I don't know, I, I guess half confused, so I couldn't figure out how to type it well, but um, I was wondering about whether or not you guys knew of any resources or if any of the presenters we saw today would be open to or allow uh, contact from students, especially in some of these more creative things. There's not a lot of opportunities for students that have interest to, to have access to people who actually know what they're talking about. Like my daughter desperately wants to become a chemical engineer for JPL. Mm -hmm. But she has, but like all of her teachers look at her like nuts. She, they're like, what the heck does a chemical engineer for JPL do? You know, so she doesn't have any of those kind of unique resources to reach out to. Yeah. Um, why don't you send me an email and I'll find the best person to connect you with. It may not be somebody in the studio, but it may be somebody in their education department. So if you don't mind emailing me a little summary of that question and I can follow up with you next week and connect you with the right person. And I will put my email on the chat here for everybody. Um, other people have their personal websites, which we will be linking to their sessions too. Um, so you can sometimes connect with them through their personal websites. And in general, I think most of our presenters today are pretty accessible, although busy. <laughs> yes. Great, and both of our emails are in there. We're happy to relay though any messages to any of our presenters if you're unable to contact them yourselves. I think we might have hit all of our questions. If we've missed a question of yours, if you don't mind just dropping it again in the chat, in the bottom of the chat, a lot of times those get pushed way up and if we don't see it, we might lose it. So if there's anything that we have not addressed for you yet, just go ahead and drop it in. Um, both my email and Craig's email is there. We also included Ella Zadwaska's email who handles membership for us. Um, and you know, we're, we're happy to help you with anything that we can. Yeah. Or you just um, want to hang out and yeah, hang out and chat. Totally good. Turn on your cameras. 
Yeah, we had about 250 people here for our closing, which is great. And we're down to about 82. So uh, we'll give it another minute and just watch for those questions. And if, if there are no more, we'll go ahead and conclude our session here. This was fun, Craig. Oh yeah, let's do it again uh, in 10 let's years. Give it, <laughs> let's, give it, let's give it 12 months. <laughs> I, I see Craig's email in my chat, but for some reason I don't see yours. Oh, you know, I might have. Uh, oh, I put. I sent it to oh, everybody put it in, in the waiting the, room. I put it in the waiting room. Let me. <laughs> let me change I, that here. I had a question there it is. Um, regarding um, JPL's um, ventilator. So, if I wanted to ask them a question, should I um, send it to them directly? I wanted to know the cost of their ventilator. Oh gosh. I need to answer that. Um. Good question. Maybe uh, if you write the question out and send it to Claire, then she could forward it off to the right person who might be able to answer for you. Okay. Yeah, if you email me, I can try to follow up with you. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, Gloria, it's $20 for your family. So the membership for educators is free for you as an individual. And if you would like to add your family, um, so spouse, partner, and children, uh, then that's an additional $20. So if you have eight people in your family, you know, eight children, then they would be included. If you have one child and one partner, um, then they would be included. And yeah, membership is our, um, yeah, thank you for that, Christian. It's the same as our art. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can, hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. you can. So um, I already did put in my, um, whatever the form was to apply for a membership mm -hmm. and I'm currently support staff but I am a credentialed teacher so I guess um I had to for personal reasons I scaled back this year mm -hmm. and then at some point I, I think I'll be back in the classroom full time okay. <laughs> anyways um yeah so that was me asking the question about the support staff if we can still um be members so just wanted to let you know I put my application in okay. and um I don't know if I should, should I email um, yeah. explaining or that, um, whatever? Should I? We, we, we have our membership office review all of those. So Ella will be taking a okay. look at them as they come in. And if there's any that she has questions about, generally she'll ask me. Um, just tell me your name one more time and I'll try to remember that. It's uh, Ang Angela DiMolanta. Okay, Angela. Um, yeah, and then if, if, if not, she would respond to you and say, I'm sorry, we can't do it. So just, she would open up the door for a conversation just in case it doesn't okay. go through. Um, Gloria is okay. asking, right. oh no, I think I answered Gloria. Lila is asking, how often do you pay for the membership? So the free educator membership is good for one year. And if you add on that $20, extra $20 to include your family, that is also good for one year. Um, if you wanted to upgrade your membership and include your family, you can do that at any point during the cycle of your membership. That's great. Come see us too, we're open. We would love to have people in the doors. We would love for you to see these exhibitions. We are opening an exhibition of Victorian radicals, uh, pre-Raphaelite, beautiful work that's coming in uh, in just about three or four weeks. But do come by, we're closing the world stage. We are closing um, the exhibition, We Belong Here this Sunday. So it's a great time to visit the museum. You can pre-register for admission online or you can come see us. Uh, we do have a practice social distancing. We sanitize the building multiple times a day and we limit admission to 55 people per hour. So we have really restricted admission, um, but it's generally not an issue if you just come to the museum. Awesome. If I drive now, will I get there by tomorrow? I'll get there by tomorrow. Let's see, Gloria, your friend would not be included with your membership. It's limited to yourself and family, um, but admission to the museum is $8 or $10 for general admission. Um, so hopefully that is a manageable amount for your friend. Mm -hmm. And every second Saturday is always free. So if you have groups of people that you would like to bring to the museum, but money is an issue, you can uh, come every second Saturday for free admission. Oh, that's nice. So that'd be the 13th after the everything closed, yeah. Yeah. Right, you should come see us on a second Saturday. Hello, anybody hear me? I can yeah. hear you. Uh, you. You got uh, time for another couple questions? Sure. Sure. Uh, can a retired, currently active substitute teacher qualify for the free membership? Or are you going to be brutal and punishes. <laughs> we are limiting it right now to, um, to active teachers with a, with a county 
or a private school email address because we do have limited number numbers of uh, teacher memberships available you can go ahead and submit it and we'll take a peek at it and if you want to include your circumstances that will help um, but we are trying to limit it to teachers who are actively teaching in the classroom now that is just for the general membership to the museum which is for for admission our educator programs are always free so you are it is free to attend the conference it is free to attend educator evening you do not need a membership to do any of that um, we just have a limited number of those memberships that we're able to offer which is why we do limit it to active teachers in nevada okay second question is um how can i apply to present the aerospace challenge in february in your program why don't you email us information because i'm not familiar with it but send us information and we can look into it and see if it's a good match um yeah i'm really curious to learn about it as well so go ahead and send send me info yeah, and both Craig and I do professional development regularly. So if it's a fit for the conference, then we'll add it to the lineup. And if it's a fit for a different program, um, then it may fit in an educator evening. It might fit in one of the programs that Craig is offering. Yeah. So we'll take a look and see if there's a good home for it in our in our Rolodex of educator programs. Absolutely. And I, um, I am the director of Nevada STEM Networks as well. So I can always share anything out um, throughout the state through that that avenue. So I'd love to connect with you. Okay, as an active uh, teacher, I gave that, that challenge to literally hundreds of high schools, and it was always well received. I will be giving that in front of 300 teachers at Oshkosh this year, so uh, that, that's in, well, yeah, that's before your conference. That's, that will be in July. Uh, anyway, like to do it. Great. And Shit. aerospace science is often left out, and it is a science. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that includes aviation, of course. Yeah. Go ahead and send that with to us. Also, the program that you're uh, running in July sounds really interesting. So if you want to send that link to us, it'll help us understand the scope of the project. Yeah. Um, that would be really helpful. For sure. And uh, I see he, you're asking about the survey. We're gonna go ahead and send that survey out at about, I think it drops at two o'clock today. So yeah, that's be... what I, I shared with her Great. privately. Um, what's the, the question, second Saturday good for the family for the Las Vegas location? There, There's no Las Vegas location so, right yeah, now. Yeah, we do not currently have a location in Las Vegas. We uh, manage Seven Magic Mountains. You can go there for free anytime you'd like to, <laughs> but we do not have a facility currently in Las Vegas. We do have staff in Las Vegas and we're thinking about what the future of the Nevada Museum of Art is as a statewide arts organization and what our footprint looks like in Las Vegas. Um, so stay tuned for future developments, but right now we do not have a physical facility there. Uh, Lori's asking about uh, free training nights, um, other free other trainings, and DRI offers trainings throughout the year in addition to the ones that um, that are offered through the Nevada Museum of Art. So, Lori, you'll be added to uh, the DRI newsletter, and that will give you information about uh, those professional development offerings as well. Let's see. And Nicole, the membership, is, the museum is located in Reno. So the benefit of the membership really is for that admission. Um, if you are in Northern Nevada and close to Reno, um, you'll use that membership for admission. Everyone else is going to be added to our email list. So that's how you'll have access to our virtual programs. We do not have a Las Vegas museum currently. Um, and then Jason is asking, is free admission for the educator's children only if you upgrade your membership to a family membership? So the membership is free to you as an educator, as an individual. You can pay $20 more for the whole year, and then that membership will include your family, or you can pay for admission for your children. And right now, uh, if they're elementary school age, it's $1 to get in. I just wanted to jump in really quickly as our director of public programs here, I will say that if you are in Las Vegas and sign up for a free educator membership, it does get you free admission to all of our virtual public programs, such as our um, book clubs, artist talks, art bites. Um, so that is one benefit if you're at a distance that you can still get from Las Vegas is free admission to those programs, which is normally about $10. So yeah. oh, that's don't, good. don't hesitate to sign up and come join us for some uh very different types of programs sorry just get a great. bus road trip but up yeah that's a great reminder um as well as our virtual art discussions i don't know if you mentioned that one virtual art discussions are offered on the 
uh, second and fourth Wednesday. I'm looking over at Christian, who's sharing the room with me. <laughs> I was I was looking there. at my screen at you. When <laughs> oh, you there's a looking. difference, right? There's the yeah, virtual art discussions are actually on the first and third Thursday. First and third. First and third. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that, that membership would get you free admission to those virtual art discussions as well. So all of those are listed on our calendar of programs. Um, and that yeah. is the benefit of membership. So if you are in Las Vegas and an active educator, the membership does have benefits. Anything else that we're missing or anything, anybody else want to unmute and say goodbye? Thank you so much. Most useful conference I've been to in a long time for my specialty. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for joining that. us. Wonderful. Thank you all. We're going to go ahead and end our session. Thank you so much for being here and joining us today. Yep. We appreciate y'all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks you everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. Very much. It was my first time, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Keep on oh, coming thank back. Thank you. Thank you.